Hey guys, this is the Magic here. We got some more rival spoilers by some more. I mean, 78 freaking cards. Oh my god, how did I think that we were done? There were 78 more damn cards. I hope this is all of them. I think this is all of them. Can I cover 78 cards in one video? No, the answer is no, but I'm gonna go really fast anyway. First, we've got Hadana's Climb. Oh boy, at the beginning of your combat on each turn, put a 1 1 counter on a target creature you control. Then, if that creature has three more counters on it, transform Hadana's Climb. Cool. You can do that as one hitter. Uh, turns into Wing Temple of Araska. Uh, you can tap to add uh, one of any color, which is what pretty much everything does. And if you pay three mixed color target creature, uh, you control gains flying and gets plus X plus X. Till end of turn where X is its power. Oh my god, manual double strike and flying. Holy crap. This is one of the absolute best flip cards I've seen in the entire set. Okay, had to slow down for that one. Next up, oh my god, Knight of the Stampede, dinosaur spells you cast cost two less to cast. Are you kidding me? Yes, this costs four, but this is ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. There are now like three or four or five cards that do this. This is ridiculous. Next up, Blazing Hope, exile target creature with power greater than or equal to your life total. Well, that is a complete and utter waste of a card. Next up, Aggressive Urge. Target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn, draw a card. That is not bad. I mean, that's just a deck shrinking cantrip. I mean, it is two, but eh, it's not bad. Uh, next up, Crashing Tide. Crashing Tide has flash as long as you control a merfolk. Uh, that's one way to phrase it. I mean, you can't have a sorcery with flash, but okay. Uh, return target creature to its owner's hand and then draw a card. Nice little replacement, cost three. I think this is quite literally drag under, I think it is. That was always a good spell. Uh, next up, we got Cleansing Ray. Take that, Vampire Scumbag. Uh, it's a sorcery cost to destroy target vampire or destroy target enchantment. Um, I mean, it's not an instant. It's like it's it's kind of vampire specific, but it's kind of not because it's modal. I think it's kind of weak. Cacophonon, which basically means noisy dinosaur. Uh, it has uh, enraged. It's a 2 5 4 4. And whenever it is dealt damage on tap target permanent. Okay, that's an infinite combo. That has got to be a record for the most infinite combos made by one irresponsibly designed card, like ever, in the history of the game. Any creature, or artifact, or enchantment, or land that can deal damage to a creature, this is an infinite combo. Now, would the combo actually do anything depends upon what you're using, but still, this is an infinite combo. Next up, we got Everdon Champion. It costs two white, one colorless, so it must be pretty good. Uh, pr what? What? Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to Everdon Champion. What? Is there supposed to be like a zero and a colon before that? What does this do and what does this mean? This isn't even an activated ability. They're like it's it's just a they put a sentence on the card. What the actual hell is this? This is not an activated ability. Okay, whatever. We don't have time for this crap. I don't know. I'm just going to assume that's a fake. Um, Divine Verdict. Uh, I think we've heard of this one before. Destroy target attacking blocking creature. Oh, cool. Too bad it costs four. Uh, it's Celestial Flare, but without the sacrifice, but you get to target it. Not worth four. There are better versions of this. Next up, Curious Obsession. It's uh, an enchantment aura that costs one enchant creature. Attached creature gets plus one, plus one, and has. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Hello. Byron of Thass. I love it. At the beginning of your end step, if you didn't attack with a creature this turn, sacrifice Curious Obsession. That's hilarious. I love this. This is insane. You put this on a flyer and you could single-handedly just dominate the game by just double drawing every single turn. This is crazy. Next up, Colossal Dreadmaw. Oh my god, he is the size of a ship, which is not realistic in any kind of biology I've ever heard. Uh, 6-6 six, six for 6 Trample. Just straight up. No hexproof, no nothing. Honestly, I don't really like it. It's not bad, but it it needs like to be a 7-6 with Trample or some something. They just need something. Next up, Exultant Sky March. It's a 2-3 flyer that does nothing. It's garbage version of Aerial Responder, and I hope nobody plays it because it's crap. Oh, wait, it's Vampire Tribal. Okay, now I kind of get it, but still, it's kind of crap. Imperial Ceratops. Cost 5-3-5 and Rage. Whenever it is dealt damage, you gain 2 life. Not worth it. Crap. Skip. Uh, next up, Expel from Araska. I, I like this already. This is, looks hilarious. <laughs> Uh, so it's an instant cost to return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Not bad. And then if you have uh, City's Blessing, which apparently is a token, uh, you, well, it's like an emblem, whatever, uh, you may put that permanent on top of its owner's library instead. And it's may. You may put it in their hand or you may put it in their on top of their library. That's good because it's like it does what it does and then it gets just a little bit better with Ascend. That's how they all should be instead of absolute garbage and then absolutely overpowered, which is what a lot of the Ascend cards seem to be. 
Next up, Crested Herd Collar. It's a 3-3 Trampler for 5. Oh my god, that sucks. And when it hits the battlefield, create a 3-3 green dinosaur creature token with Trample. Okay, that's cool then. Uh, it's like an automatic worm coil engine almost, sort of. Not really. Cool. Uh, next up, Legion Conquistador. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for any number of cards called Le Legion Conquistador. Reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Okay. I am 99% sure that this is already a card. Like, I, I'm legit gonna go check. I am extremely certain that this is already a card. What the hell? What the actual raging hell? This is literally a reprint from Ixalan. What the actual hell, wizards? I just, uh, there are no words. I have no words for this. No words. I think MTG Salvation, where I got these images from, because they're the only ones who put them in chronological order, apparently. Thanks, MythicSpoilers.com. I think they're messing with us. Anyway, Bombard. Bombard deals four damage to target creature for three as an instant. That's not bad, actually. I mean, it's not or or a uh, uh, player, but it's not, I mean, three's a little high, but it's not bad. I mean, four damage. Next up, Guilt Grove Stalker. It can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less, so no chumpies. Uh, so, I mean, that's kind of cool. If you got boost spells, you'd take something out. That's actually a really good creature. Uh, next up, we got Kite Sail Corsair. I love this artwork. That's pretty cool. Also, it's not a female. Good for you, wizards. Uh, it's two one and has flying as long as it's attacking. So, um, that's almost a benefit. <laughs> like, in case you have something that says destroy flying creature, they can only do it during combat. Like, this is a really good card. Next up, Hardy Veteran. Uh, it's a vanilla 2-2, two -two, except that as long as it's your turn, it has uh, four toughness. So, that's kind of neat. That's a little something, I guess. I mean, you'd kind of want to block with it when it's not your turn. Next up, Luminous Bonds. Please let this be a pin down. Yes, it is. Cannot attack or block. Love it. I think that there's actually a little bit better version of this out right now. and It's also in color and the same cost. That might be wrong. I know Cast Out is in it. But, um, oh, Mandatory Rest or whatever. That I think that one lets them sack it and gain two life or something. So, yeah, I mean, this is just straight up staple. I love it. Uh, we needed this in white and we need one in blue. So, hopefully I see it. Next up, Brazen Freebooter, a.k.a. the people who upload YouTube videos to Facebook because they're dicks. Uh, let's see. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a treasure. And that's it. That's not really a good card. Even a treasure deck is not a very good card. Next up, Miscloaked Herald. Um, it can't be blocked because, of course, it can't. This is a functional reprint of a card from uh, the Theros era, if I'm not mistaken. It was a Triton Shorestalker, I think, actually. Uh, next up, Charging Tuscadon. Oh my god, those are some teeth, bro. It's 4-4 four, for four, 5 with Trample, and if it would deal combat damage to a player, it deals double that much damage to the player instead. Oh my god, Selective Double Strike. This needs to be a thing. They need to assign a mechanic keyword to it. This needs to be a thing because it it's so... Like, subtle, yet powerful, yet fair. I mean, remember, Afflict was like semi-trample, now they have semi-double strike. This is a fantastic idea for a card. That said, not actually a very good card. But, remember, if you could, like, plus four it somehow, ooh, now you got some. I just think five's a little high and four's a little bit low for trample, but, I mean, it, it, it's basically an eight fours. So, I mean, whatever. Next up, Majestic Her Harry, whatever the hell, Teeth Mobile thing. It's a two-two for four with flying, so I'm sure it's lovely. Whenever it attacks another target dinosaur, you control gains flying. That ain't worth it. I mean, you can get, like, a flying 12-12, most of the biggies have uh, trample anyway, so who cares? Things creep me out, man, creep me out. Martyr of Dusk, uh, when it dies, create a 1-1 one -one vampire creature token. It's 2-1, um, token has lifelink, and this is pretty good. I mean, you can just, like, swing away with it, chump it, whatever. That's pretty good. You do get a vampire ETB, too, and it helps uh, prop up Ascend, so that's just good. Uh, next up, Monkey Pirate! Goblin Trailblazer has uh, Menace. It's a 2-1 for 2, and it's a pirate. This is a good card. A straight up good card. Next up, Hunt the Week. Um, be right back. Yep, that's in Kaladesh and Iconic Masters. Okay, Fate Reforged 2, actually. Why not? Let, let's just reprint everything. You guys know what it does. 1-1 one, one counter and force fight. Simple, simple. Next up, Moment of Truth. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 in town to turn you gain 2 life. Um, as an instant, that is insane. This card's insane. I love it. I want to marry this card. Oh my god. For 1 mana, this is crazy. That's a one mana white kill spell with a life gain on it because you do this in the middle of combat, you are removing the creature that, that this got hit by basically. Or what you boosted, you get what I mean. Next up, Needle Tooth Raptor. It has Enrage, one is dealt damage, deals five damage to target creature and opponent controls. Holy crap. Now it is only a two two for four, so I mean, whatever, but uh, it's like a, 
It's one of those you don't want to block it, but you do want to block it. And if you block it, you damn well better do two damage. And then they, if they do heroic intervention, you're going to lose a creature twice. And it's a pretty good card, I guess. Situational, though. Next up, Jade Bearer. And without going into the entire history of Jade in the ancient world, um, let me just sum it up with wrong continent, dumbasses. That's Asia. That said, uh, when Jade Bearer enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on another target bearer. Folk, you control it's 1-1 for 1. That's not bad if you want to go lurk, low curve. There's kind of already a card that does that, though. Next, another damn merfolk. I'm getting sick of these stupid fish. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw three cards and put two cards from your hand on the top of your library in any order. That is pointless and stupid. Oh, you didn't want these cards? Uh, too bad. I hope you can shuffle. I mean, if, I guess if you have Evolving Wilds, but this, this is just a bad card. It's just bad. It, it costs four, for God's sake. Next up, Jadecraft Artisan. I don't know why we're in Asia, but we are. I don't think that the Aztec or Mayans or anybody did anything with Jade. All right, so when it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two, plus two, till end of turn. It's a three, three, four. It's actually not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad, but the merfolk might have trouble swinging, so uh, this works. Next up, Rasco Raptor. It costs four. It's three, four. That's it. So don't play it. Wait a minute. Now, I could have sworn that this was already a card. Because it looks and sounds really familiar, but I couldn't find it. I'm just going to assume it is, and that wizard's a bunch of idiots. Anyway, next up, Sailor of Means. We got uh, one, four for three. I went into this battlefield, create a treasure. I feel like I already covered this one, too. They're all starting to run together in my head, honestly. Next up, Pride of Conquerors. Ascend. Uh, creatures you control have plus one, plus one, until end of turn. If you have the city's blessing, those creatures get plus two, plus two. Yay! Still not that good in either case, really. I mean, a plus two, plus two symmetrical for all creatures. Yeah, that's not bad, but one, one, that's not usually good enough. Next up, Jungle Boar Pioneer. When it enters the battlefield, create a one, one blue merfolk creature token with hexproof is two, two for three. Uh, I don't like it. Next up, Reckless Rage. It deals four damage to target creature you don't control, two damage to target creature you do control, because uh, you want to take something out and do an enrage trigger at the same time for one mana. Holy crap, this is one of those powerful cards in the entire set. Well, okay, powerful maybe not, but, like, useful, oh my god. But then again, it's four damage to a creature for one and an enrage trigger. Now, it's kind of a drawback, though, because you can almost only put it in an enrage deck. So, you know, because it's mandatory. You have to pick one of your creatures and deal two damage to it, the end. I mean, it is what it is. But this card is crazy good for one mana. I mean, I'm surprised it's not a damn sorcery, at least. Jeez. Next up, okay. Somebody wants what the fuck is it? What the fuck is it? I swear to God, this is already a card. Yes, it is. This is a card, word for word, identically copied from Ixalan. What the hell? When have they ever done this? Has Wizards ever done this? Because I don't remember them doing this, and I am deeply, deeply confused. This is the laziest way to fix, like, a draft, and honestly, any pre-release, any draft, is gonna have two packs for Mixalan anyway. What is this? Did, did they find an infinite combo or an accident or an overpowered card, and they pulled it at the last second and just threw in some BS? They just threw in, oh, I, I have a raptor companion. Because it, it's, like, the same artwork. They didn't even change it. That has to be what it is. They had to have pulled one or two cards and just replaced them with just blah. It'll actually be really easy to tell if that's what they did because I'll count the number of on-color creatures at each rarity and all this because it, it almost always like balances out the number of spells and stuff and the rarities. I think something went drastically wrong here. Anyway, next up, Araska Frillback. It's 4-2 for 3 and it's a dinosaur, so don't play it. Uh, next up, oh yeah. I see red. And guess what? It's also a monkey. I love monkeys. I love blue pirate monkeys. They should have removed the other three tribes from the lore and just done pirate monkeys. Or Aztec monkeys, pirate monkeys, uh, what else? Vampire monkeys? That'd be pretty sweet. Sun Empire monkey? Wait, no, that's not... What, which one didn't I say? Mer monkeys. All right, so you enchant a creature. It gets plus two, plus one, and first strike for two. It's not bad, but then at the beginning of your end step, if you didn't attack with a creature this turn, sacrifice it. Uh... I mean, that'll get you in some situations, but at least you don't have to sacrifice the creature itself. But I think there are, like, better versions of, out the, of this card out there right now. Anyway, Simon Reaver, uh, it has Ray to cost one less to cast if you attack with the creature's turn. It has flying, it's 3-2, so you could get a 3-2 flyer for three. That is damn good. And honestly, for four, it's still pretty good. Siren Tribal, calling it right now. Uh, overgrown Armasaur, uh, that's a big old fatty right there, that's for sure. 
Enrage, whenever it's dealt damage, create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. Oh, good. I can't wait for those to come back. I love sapperlings. Uh, it's a 4-4 four, four for 5. I mean, doesn't strike me as one of the better enrage creatures, but if it's... I'd say on curve, but... On curve ends at 4. For 5, you better win the game, and this doesn't win the game. I mean, guys, Majestic Miriarch costs 5, and I just leveled somebody with a 14-14 flying double strike Miriarch today at FNM. Next up, Sanguine Glorifier. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter t on another target vampire you control. It's a 3-3-4. Hey, that sounds familiar. I think there was, like, a merfolk that did this or something. Um, I don't like it. I mean, it's not flying. It's not lifelink. It's really just not good enough. Not for four. Uh, next up, plummet. You know, it does destroy target creatures flying. Sweet. Next up, shake the foundations. Hey, look, it's that dude. He's back. Uh, let's see. Deals one damage to each creature without flying. Draw a card. Holy enrage triggers. I kid you not, I'm going to do mono red enrage and it's going to be about $5. And it's probably going to have some winning capabilities because, my God, does Red have the enraged triggers, uh, like the way to do it, and the actual physical triggers. Uh, next up, Strength of the Pack, cost six, put two 1-1 one, one counters on each creature you control. That's actually pretty damn good. I mean, it's six, but that's this pretty good. It's still like six, though. But on the other hand, it's two counters. But on the other hand, it's six, though. But, I mean, you do get two counters. Next up, Slippery Scoundrel, a.k.a. Captain America. Let's end. Who cares? As long as you have City's Blessing, you don't. It has Hexproof and can't be blocked. Holy crap. That's actually, this is like really good, but you'll never get a send, so who cares? And finally, I'm just arbitrarily ending it at this one. Snubhorn Sentry. Uh, it's a 0-3 for 1. That's cool. Oh, and with the send, it gets plus 3. So it's a 3-3 three, three for 1, but only late game, and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to tap it. You don't have to pay mana. There's no, you know, Mega Morph Transform. No, it's just, here, have this. This is a good card, honestly. Like, this is a, a really good card for turn one. Well, in, like, a long-term dinosaur build-up deck. Uh, clearly not in, like, a like a dinosaur fast, you know, aggressive damage deck. So that's it for the first half. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys very shortly with uh, about 35 more cards. Woo! Rocked. Oh! What the fuck are those? What the fuck are those? What the fuck are those? What the fuck? What the fuck are those?